This is the Pixel 7 Pro. And five months later, it's no longer my daily driver. Let's talk about why. Before we get into why I'm no longer daily driving the 7 Pro, I just want to congratulate it for the improvements that it's made over last year's Pixel 6 Pro. Those improvements being the display, the under display camera, the battery, and the charging even though it's still behind most of the competition. The display on this phone is way brighter than last year and way more visible outside. Uh, the under display uh, fingerprint sensor is also way way better. Uh, it's more responsive and when you press on it in like a slightly off angle, it doesn't immediately just not recognize, it'll at least try. And it it has more of a success rate with the S23 Ultra. But I am still disappointed by the charging capabilities on this phone as even the OnePlus 11 has, I mean, super quick charging almost uh, at about 80 watts. And this phone is still stuck at a mediocre 23 watt fast charging. I mean, I wouldn't even call that fast charging, I just say charging, right? But at the same time, I don't really think it needs this because of the big battery in this phone. Uh, the battery on the Pixel 7 Pro is impressive. I mean, it already had a 5,000 mAh cell, but the Pixel 6 Pro had that type of battery and the battery life was pretty mediocre. This phone, however, can probably be a two-day phone for some people. For me, it's more like a day and a half. I can get through a full day, I'll end a day with 40%, and if I let it go over the night, it'll probably lose five to six percent overnight, which for an Android phone is actually really good, by the way. Standby time is great. The next day, you'll have around 30% left, then maybe by the afternoon, it'll probably be dead. So it's a day and a half. Uh, but regardless, a day and a half is better than the one day or even slightly less than a day battery life that, you would, that we would get on the Pixel 6 Pro. So I'm happy that Google did improve that. However, one thing I will miss uh, from switching over to the S23 Ultra is definitely the software on the Pixel 7. While I never really liked the one aspect of the control center, which was... Um, control center, I'm not on iOS. Uh, the quick panel was the integrated internet and... Um, mobile data uh, toggle. It's kind of annoying, but other than that, I really like the design of Material U. It's very, it's different, you know? And as an Android fan, we've been having kind of the same quick panel settings. It's just like the same Android experience on the Pixel phone for a while. And I really think Material U changes that for the better and well, software can't look the same forever, right? But overall, the software experience in terms of quickness and smoothness is also great. And that's also helped by the 120Hz display on this thing. It's excellent. Uh, also to add the color accuracy on this is very good as well. So why did I switch from the Pixel 7 Pro? I'll tell you guys this much. Um, the S23 Ultra is just better. I, I can't, there's no other way to explain, it's just better at almost everything. I mean, design-wise, the 7 Pro does hold up pretty well compared to the Ultra, but I've gotta say, I mean, just the handling of this phone is really, really nice. And the way it's constructed really makes it fit well into the hand, which is another thing I will miss by switching to the 23 Ultra is definitely just the feel in the hand without a case. With, with the case, they're pretty similar. But I've gotta say, the performance on this phone, while I mean, at the beginning, it was never supposed to be amazing, and I wasn't really that surprised by the performance on the Pixel 6 Pro in the first place. The Tensor G2 in here, I just thought it would make just a little bit bigger of a jump, and it simply hasn't, and I'm kind of disappointed in that. I mean, when I'm playing games, when I'm doing heavy multitasking workloads, I can tell that the Tensor G2 in here just isn't up for that task. And while you can do a lot of things, the upper echelon of phone multitasking is pretty limited on the Pixel 6, on the Pixel 7 Pro. And part of that is really the way that Google allows multitasking. If you do go and try to multitask, uh, it is a little bit different than other phones like Samsung phones. You'll get like this really big gray bar taking away a lot of your screen real estate in the first place. And it just isn't the best thing to use. While on the Samsung phone, I mean, it seems like this phone is literally tailored, tailored for multitasking. First off, with the S Pen. Second off, I mean, just, I feel like this One UI has been optimized specifically for multitasking. I mean, you have the sidebar on the right, you can switch apps without even having to go to the home screen. And 
The multitasking menu in and of itself when you try to split screen is pretty intuitive. You you can click the three bars, you can have different ways to order the apps, you can favorite them. Uh, it's just really, really intuitive and it seems like Google just hasn't put any thought into it. But I think the biggest reason why I switched over to the Galaxy S23 Ultra is probably the camera performance. And you might have just gasped at that because the Pixel 7 Pro, I mean, half the selling point is the camera. The Pixel is the camera and the camera is the Pixel. So why would I not enjoy it? Well, because the Pixel only does focus on one aspect of the camera. That's still taking, or photos if you may. And I've got to say the Pixel does still take excellent photos. But I've seen a, de a degradation of like night photo quality. Like I feel like the night mode has gotten worse. It's not as good as it was even on the 6 Pro. And I think that's to the lack of processing. Uh, which to be fair, I liked what they did here with the processing. Um, it was a little bit toned down from the Pixel 6 Pro. But the Pixel 6 Pro also took excellent, excellent night shots because of that over processing. And I think now it's under processing the night shots just a little bit. And I sometimes favor the night shots out of the S23 Ultra. And I don't think I've ever said that before. The Pixel has always taken better photos than the Samsung phone. And now it's become way closer and I think Samsung has taken a leap in terms of video quality as well. Now video has never been the Pixel 6 Pros or the Pixel 7 Pros a strong suit. However, this year Samsung, first off they put a 200 megapixel camera in this thing which in and of itself is huge. But as I said in my own review, which you can check out on my channel, it doesn't really matter too much as the photos that you're going to be taking on this thing for the most part are 12 megapixels. Same thing with the Pixel 7 Pro. However, the video performance on this thing, especially at night, is greatly improved from last year. And with the Pixel 7 Pro making very, very small incremental updates to video, this phone, in terms of video performance, is just way, way, way better to the point where I might actually use this thing over the iPhone sometimes just because of the versatility of the zoom that the iPhone simply does not even have. All that to say is that the Pixel 7 Pro, five months later, is still worth it. And I think it might be worth it over the Galaxy S23 Ultra. While I do use the S23 Ultra, it's not for everybody. First off, it's one hell of a big phone, right? Uh, it's not small by any means. And especially with the case, it, it, it can be really, really bulky. And it doesn't fit in some of my jeans pockets sometimes, which can be, can be really annoying when you're traveling. However, it does also cost more, a lot more. The Galaxy S23 Ultra starts at $1199, and this Pixel 7 Pro starts at $899. So, that's something to consider. I mean, the Pixel 7 Pro also has more RAM at that starting point, 12 gigs versus 8 gigs, which I really don't get. You used to sell a 12 gig to 56 gig model, and that's like the sweet spot for me. I love that storage and RAM configuration, but no, Samsung decided to just up and change it to the base model S23 series spec for 256 gig. I don't know why. Anyway, I like that Google included more RAM. But at the same time, price also does matter, as I said earlier. And price to performance wise, buy this, buy this, buy this. Especially, especially since Google has been discounting stuff a lot recently. And the Pixel 7, 7a and the Pixel 8 are coming out soon. So if you have a Pixel 6, I'd say wait, uh, because those phones are probably gonna be better, I hope so. Um, and that 7A is getting 90 hertz display, which would kind of make the Pixel 7 or Pixel 8 kind of pointless to me. I don't see the point of buying a Pixel 8 if the Pixel 7A has a 90 hertz screen, but regardless, I'm getting off topic. Um, this phone is probably better price to performance wise. However, performance wise, the Galaxy S23 Ultra absolutely crushes the Pixel 7 Pro. I mean, demolishes. First off, you have the processor in here, which is the 8 Gen 2, which we all know is efficient, fast, like yada yada yada. It's amazing. But what really, put, like, what's the kicker here is, well, it's made for Galaxy. So it's optimized for this phone specifically. But then again, Google did do the same thing and a year earlier. So I've got to give props to Google as well. So in the end, 
Is the Pixel 7 Pro still worth it? Around five months later. I gotta tell you guys, I don't know. I mean, it's still a great phone, but with its mediocrity in charging and below average video quality, you can buy this phone if you're a certain type of person. If you enjoy taking still shots, if you like Pixel UI, the inward experience on here, and if you like getting updates the fastest and straight from Google, which I will miss sorely on my S23 Ultra, uh, I would say buy this phone. And also to note, uh, the, con the connectivity issues I experienced on last year's Pixel 6 Pro have also been resolved here, so no dropping signal. So all of that combined, this phone is still a great buy in 2023 and probably still will for years to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.